In this lesson, we're going to find the area of an ellipse using the transformation of a unit circle. Okay, so we're going to, so to start out with, uh, we're going to define, we're going to let D be a unit disk. Okay, with, so that means that it's going to have a uh, radius of of one okay so let's say over here in this uh, in this domain okay let's call this u1 and u2 okay and here's my disk so under the transformation okay We're going to um, find, or we want to find the area of the ellipse. So over here, this is going to be x1. Let's see, I use keep it in the corresponding color. So this will be x1, and this will be uh, x2. Okay, for axis. Okay, so over here we're going to call this, uh, this will be for D. This is for the disk, and then here we have an ellipse. Okay. So we need, uh, remember that we need, we need a transfer, we need a matrix that does this transformation. And it turns out that the matrix that does this, okay, is, uh, we're gonna call that A, it turns out the, ma the matrix that gives us, uh, that transforms a disk into ellipse is uh, A, zero, zero, B. Okay. So, okay, so we're gonna see why that is. Okay, so, okay, so T, is determined by A. So why is this? Okay, so we're going to look at this. We're gonna, I'm gonna explain why that, why this is. Okay, so again, let's look at, okay, our, our, our matrix we have is A0, 0, B. So let's uh, let this matrix act on U1 and U2. And this is going to, because we want to get something in terms of x1 and x2. So we have the matrix that's acting on something in the disk. And it's going to transform it into ellipse. Okay. All right. So from here, from these equations, okay, this is going to give us A times U1 equals to x1 and uh, B times U2 equals to x2. Okay, so we have this, uh, we have this system here, this system of equations. So now what we can do is we can plug, okay, we can substitute x1 and x2 into the equation of ellipse here. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, so we're going to get a times u1 squared, so this will be squared, divided by a squared plus b squared times u2 squared over b squared equals to 1. Okay, so a squares will cancel out and b squares will cancel out. And that leaves us with u1 squared plus u2 squared equals to 1. Okay, so this, this is the equation of a unit circle. In terms of in in terms of u. So therefore, okay, we showed, okay, so we showed that um, if we have u, if u is u is a vector, and d, let's say, 
Okay, so use it belongs to the disk with the condition. So that's with the condition that u1 squared plus u2 squared is less than or equal to 1. Okay, because that's including the boundary and within this disk. Then this is this is a both uh, this is double implementation, which shows that x belongs to the ellipse with x1 over a squared plus x2 over b squared less than or equal to 1. So again, that's it. That's the ellipse, including the surface of an ellipse in the inside. Okay, so we showed, okay, so therefore we showed that this is the matrix uh, that we need to do this transformation. Okay, so now, okay, so now we have everything. Okay, so the area of the ellipse Okay, so the area ellipse is going to be equal to the determinant of A. So let me move this down. Okay, so the determinant of A times the, the area of that disk. Okay. So going back to our matrix, the matrix, remember, was it goes up here. So the determinant of that matrix, again, it's just a, just looking at the main diagonals, or the values on the main diagonal. So that's going to give us um, A times B. Okay. And the area of a disk, okay, and this in this case, our disk is a, it's a unit. It's basically a unit circle, right? With radius, well, it's radius one. So that's going to be. Uh, so the area of a circle is just pi r squared. So the radius is one. So that's going to give us pi. So therefore, the area of the ellipse is a times b times pi. Okay, and this will be some units squared. Okay, so so it's a very nice. Uh, this theorem is very nice. You can find okay. You can find the uh, area of or, or even volume of something more complicated if you know the if you know what the basic shape looks like under under the pre transformation. So it's very useful, okay, as long as you, again, as long as you know that if you can find the transformation that does that, and if you know the original uh, area or volume of that shape, then you can find, and you can use this to find the area or volume of, of the transformation that's being applied, of that shape.